Hey guys, Patrick from Ryan Rock Off-Road here. We've been getting a lot of requests to do a walk around on our uh, Grand Cherokee nickname Pumpkin. Uh, so we figured what better time than a drizzly December day to uh, do it. So we've got one of the owners of Iron Rock Off-Road here, Derek, who's also the owner operator of said Pumpkin. Uh, Derek, why don't we start off with what what is Pumpkin's current state? What is What are we running here? So what it is now, it's a 1999 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and it's got the 4.7 high output V8 in it. The 45 RFE transmission, uh, got a one ton Ford axle out of a 99 to 04 Super Duty, and we've got chromoly axle shafts in it, 456 gears and uh, e-locker in there. And then in the back, we've got a 14 bolt out of the military one and a quarter ton Chevys. We've got the Detroit in that, again with the 456 ratio. That's all shaved, so that's buying about another inch and a half of ground clearance. Good, okay. Uh, disc brakes on the back, of course the disc brakes came on the front, and yeah, it's just a ton of fun. Awesome. Well, from what I understand, and I'm learning a lot even though I've been here for a little bit about the history of this thing as we've been talking a little bit, getting ready, um, this thing's got a quite a colored history. Uh, pretty interesting. So, um, Multicolored, I'm Yeah, sure. yeah <laughs> exactly. Um, so why don't we get out of the drizzle, head into the conference room, we'll sit down, and you can kind of give us a little history lesson on this thing. I'll see if I can remember it. All right. And I just was never really fully happy with what, just what I wanted it to be. I bought it in 04. I from bone stock, just started modifications pretty much as quickly as we could come up with them. You know, we're just working out of a two-car garage, just starting this as a business and uh, just having some fun with it. So between 2004 and 2007, this thing went from bone stock, not a scratch in it, to putting our early lift kit in with a five and a half inch critical path long arm kit with the Y-Link. Did the transfer case skid plate, premium rock sliders. Just did, most of our catalog had been developed all during that time. Through that process, broken Dana 35 axle shaft, the uh, sides and spiders. So then I welded it, uh, gave it the old Lincoln locker. That worked real good till the carrier broke. And then uh, it was time to put JK axles under it. Wasn't going to put any money into a Dana 35. Well, I suppose the JK axles, were they Ruby axles? Yeah, they're JK Rubicon axles. But that was back when those axles were, I think it was 1200 bucks for the rear, 1300 bucks for the front. Oh my God. Caliper to caliper, rotor to rotor. Amazing. Right from the Jeep dealer. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Not, not so cheap anymore. No. <laughs> Through that process, blew up the stock four liter in it, put the V8 in it, did the full V8 trans engine, wire harness, all works. I was going to pick up the kids or something from my wife and uh, connecting rod decided it was going to come out of the side of the block. And, oh, yeah. Bulletproof 4 -0? Yeah, I bulletproof <laughs> my... <laughs> did a fuel tank tuck on it. You're, you're going through you know V8 swap, you're going through tank tuck. And you got a factory A arm back there. Yeah, yep. And this is all in the early days. All right, so Derek, we know that uh, Pumpkin experienced a, a traumatic event on the trail <laughs> in uh, Moab, if I remember correctly. So it was rolled, right? Yes. Yeah, rolled right on over. Tell us about that. What What was the situation? What were you doing? What led up to it? So we were in Moab uh, for the Grand Slam 2010 event. Um, it was a Grand Cherokee event out there. Ton of fun. Um, we went up, we were doing Moab Rim, really nice trail. Um, one of the guys who was with us had a uh, little trouble with his CJ, uh, quit getting fuel for whatever reason. Figured, no big deal, we'll just tow it back down and uh, deal with it at the ground when it's easier when you get auto parts and stuff. Were you, were you in a spot with like a lot of obstacles or was this fairly easy going at this point? At this point, it's pretty easy going. Okay. You know, it was uh, you know, a couple little ledges and stuff. 
nothing too big. So we didn't think anything of it. So we start towing him. We put uh, me in front of him, and then we put another guy in behind him to be kind of uh, like an additional set of brakes because his brakes weren't working. So we're towing him down, and uh, we kind of get to a little corner just before the Z bend on uh, the Z turn on Mob Rim. And his front tire wedged into a rock as, as I was turning right, and it just kind of tilted me, started to roll over. And maybe I made a good choice, maybe a bad choice, but I gave it some throttle to, uh, to pull out. Yeah, then it went over. So rolled it over uh, one and a quarter times and uh, yeah, ended up on its side. And it wasn't the same after that. <laughs> I can see that. Was everyone okay? Fortunately, everybody was okay. Um, unfortunately, I was not wearing a seatbelt because I was in and out as we were doing this. So I bounced around in there a little bit. I was fine. Um, I had two passengers with me. They were both belted in and they were safe. Good. Scared, but safe. How did you get the thing back on all four? Um, so we were able to get somebody down on the low side, pull it over with a winch, and then we came in and started um, you know, just doing whatever we needed to do to make sure it was at least drivable to get back off the trail. So you drove it off the trail after that? Yeah, yeah. The windshield was folded down. It was nearly down to you know, where the windshield was touching the back of my gloves uh, when I was driving. Ooh. That was a little puckery because by the time we got done, it was dark. So we were running down that thing with flashlights, and it was a little tough. So after a rollover like that, I mean, you got, I would think, two, two types of people, right? Personally, I would like, nope, done. That, that, shell's, that shell's done for. We'll, we'll strip it and get, a, you know, get the next rig. And then evidently there's a second type of person like yourself who says, no, nah, we can fix that. What was the thought process? It was a, it was a difficult process plan on what to do. And, and I kind of stood on it for quite a while because there was so much time that went into that, that chassis. And regardless, after this, I wanted a roll cage no matter what. So no matter what I was going to go into, it was going to get caged. So uh, my, my son and I and a couple of the staff here at Iron Rock and uh, Josh, my partner here, um, just we spent a lot of time straightening, pushing, putting roll cage into it. And couldn't be happier with the result, but it was a hell of a, hell of a long process to get there. Now that said, happy with the result, Are you? would you do that same path again? Would you opt to fix it? Or would you, if you had to do it all over again, take choice A and start over? That's a good question. I think I'd still do it the way I did, yeah? but I'd paint it a little sooner. <laughs> I'll wait two or three years to repaint the calico. Yeah, yeah. Seeing some of the uh, after pictures of straight panels, which is good, but they're all different colors. Yeah, I mean, it was black and blue and white, and yeah, it looked terrible. Yeah, and, and then there's some Bondo exposed in a few different spots, and yeah, it looked absolutely terrible. How long did it stay in that condition? Oh, probably at least two years, uh, maybe even three. Built. So what, what's happening here? So I don't know if you've ever noticed them, but the plastic bumper used to go all the way up there. And it's just, it's just ugly underneath it. Yep. But I want it to look good. So I formed some sheet metal, formed it, made it look like it was all factory. So I'm down underneath the taillight, which would have just been the plastic bumper. That's all metal now. And it was so cool. But, you know, it's one of those things. It's like a, like a show car. Those subtle things that you just hope somebody notices. You don't really want it to be out in their face. But right. But if nobody notices, you're like, oh, did all that work oh, for nothing? <laughs> that's, that's all Bondo done by somebody who's not an auto body guy. <laughs> but it worked out okay. The front was all 100% handmade. Oh, yeah. It was, it was just simply we, we, we needed half an inch of clearance against the radiator. That was it. You know, everything else can go. We didn't care about that. Um, just pushed it back there, made some bracketry. But that center section, that's that's all we had. We had a couple of those XJ bumpers, and I just cut one into pieces to make it work. Basically cut some pie cuts out of it to make it work on a dub J. And I think we used, you know, just some stuff we had laying around cutting because we didn't have CNC tools. All the sheet metal work was all by hand. Basically the winch mounting was all a series of handcrafted parts. All the, basically the wings on it, they're all handmade. She was ugly. It was just ugly. 
It, it sat that way two to three years, I'm guessing. I mean, so far that the uh, cage started rusting, finally kind of got tired of that and put a, put a coat of orange on it. Kind of went shopping at different car dealers, driving through all kinds of different car dealer parking lots and going, what color do I want it to be? And finally, that orange, uh, it was a 20... It was a 2011 or 2012 Camaro orange. Okay. And it was really sharp. I was like, that's, that's the color. Okay. Very cool. We've seen the, the rollover um, and then you got to, yeah, it all fixed up and painted and caged. And at that time, you were um, on those JK axles and 35s, correct? Yep, yep. Okay. But now you're on tons. Now it's on one tons and 39s. Why did you go to the tons? I think I just kept breaking the Dana 44 stuff. But this swap to tons just allowed going to a bigger tire. I wanted to put a 39-inch tire on it. And then, in theory, it was going to be bomb-proof. Before doing all that, had you just considered driving better? And I, that's all the better I can drive. <laughs> I, I have a tendency, my right foot is a lot heavier than my left foot. Mm. So something, something about that caused issues mm. for me. Specifically, what one-ton axles are those? So what we've got is a 99-04 Dana 60 front, and that's got 456 gears in it, chromoly axle shafts, 35 spline inner and outer. And then we did uh, PSC hydro steering on it, full hydro. So we've got no gearbox anymore. And then we did the uh, full floater corporate 14 bolt. And then we set that up in our mill. We machined that down so we can do a shave kit on it. We turned down the ring gear in the machine shop. So we've got 456 gears, Detroit locker in the back, uh, disc brakes. And I mean, those axles are absolutely just awesome. So we've seen it uh, when it made its transition to orange and donned itself the nickname Pumpkin, but it doesn't quite look like that anymore. It's been wrapped since. How about how long did it stay orange? Just straight orange, no wrap. I think for about six years it was orange and just wanted to do something to kind of make it pop a little more. Well, the wrap turned out phenomenal. We had a shop, k and Graphics, do the, do the wrap for us, and they did an awesome job on it. Well, it never hurts to have... Uh, a rolling billboard. Yeah, I, I, agree. I agree. You know me, I gotta be the center of attention. Of course. Well, I, I mean, wow, with that whole story. Uh, I mean, even, even in preparing for this video, I, I learned even more this, you know, last time around. It's incredible what this thing has gone through. Even just the, the, the minor details, you know, like the, the custom rear bumper, you know, you take that factory bumper off, you're left with that ugly sheet metal behind, but you, you made that filler plate, made it just seamless. It looks great. Now, obviously, it's gotten a couple dings since, you know, that process, but it still looks great. Um, so thank you for taking us through that entire thing. Well, you're welcome. It's been a lot of fun and uh, happy to share, and hopefully it'll, Kind of educate people on what's been done to it and the path that it's taken. It's still my favorite rig to wheel, so hopefully I'll see you all out on the trail. Absolutely. Can't wait. Sounds good.